Good evening, all. Look, we're talking about HP earnings. HPQ, by the way. Um, definitely a stock I've been following for a, a hot minute. And look, it's one I've told you you probably should have gotten into. I, I told you it last year, and and look, this thing has been popping off. You look over the last year, this thing's up 48%, and it's been, prior to that, very, very stagnant. You look at this period from really 20 uh, 17 on, or really 2016, I guess you could say, on to 2020 where you saw only 40% growth. Um, for a four-year span, um, really, it's, it's it's right around three years there. Uh, but uh, look, that's a weak, weak growth over, over the time in which the market was up by a significantly larger margin. But you look since 2020, the dip here, the stock's up over 100%. So it's been a, a fantastic buy for us at this point. So... Um, definitely wish I had you know put more into this one. Can't lie to you because you look and obviously a position I've I've made a lot of money on, but I only own 14.4 uh, shares sadly, uh, with an average cost basis of 18.11. So wish I had put more into this, but we're up big, 91%. Let's look at these earnings though, see if this stock continues to have a buy thesis because it's up, I mean nearly 8% after hours. So is it still worth buying this thing? Let's take a look at these earnings. Uh, nine gap EPS here, 94 cents, beats by six cents, and a gap EPS of $2.71, beats by 87 cents. Am I seeing that right? What? Beats by $1.87? Uh, I do have something on my glasses, actually, now that you say that. Um, but you're gonna tell me this beat by a dollar eighty-seven cents. Let's 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 clean this. Let's clean these off real quick. Uh, meanwhile, I can't see a single word that exists on the screen. I'm the most blind individual that's ever existed. Uh, it's caked on there, whatever it is. But uh, um, we'll get it. Um, look, we're looking better now. Revenue line, another incredible beat. Revenue here at sixteen point seven billion, up nine percent year over year. It's a beat by one point two eight billion dollars. This this is crazy for this company. This isn't a company that posts beats like this. They just don't. I mean, I hate to say it. And that's why the stock was so stagnant for a long period of time. They don't post beats like this, but here they go doing it. That's that's why the stock's up. I can't lie to you. That's fantastic. And we look at the guidance. Let's take a look at this. Um, Gap EPS is expected to be the $0.92 cent to $0.98 cent range. And non-gap of $0.99 to $1.05. Versus a consensus of $0.95, cents only so they've... Um, beat on the guidance aspect too for the full year. Um, they're expecting gap EPS of 386 to 406 and non gap to 407 to 427 compared to a consensus of 408. So, uh, in my opinion, obviously, you look at mid range and that's a um, that's a beat. So, we'll take that as a win. Uh, obviously, look, I expected pretty good numbers here because you look here and given this massive dividend raise, I mean. Well, you don't really see companies raise the dividend by quite this much um, that often. So you knew it was an impressive, uh, going to be an impressive quarter with obviously a, a big boost in uh, obviously net income when they're able to raise the dividend by such a large margin in a, in a little period of time there. Um, I like it. I like it. So let's look at this this press release and see some of the, the finer details here. Um so for the fiscal year, five uh, $5.33 in EPS for the full year, which of the previous guidance was 356 to 362 per share. So they massively outperformed the full year, and it was really mostly because of this quarter was massive. Um, net revenue for the year was up 12% from the year prior. Fantastic. It's really good. And the year, they returned $7.2 billion to shareholders, uh, which is nice. So as far as fourth quarter numbers... Um, previous outlook was 82 cents to 88 cents, and here they are with a $2.71 cent number. How is it feasible? I don't know. Uh, revenue is up 9.3%. Really nice to see that. Uh, and they returned $2 billion to shareholders this quarter alone. Um, what else can we really see here? Obviously, we like to look at the difference in revenue here. Fantastic. And you look at just quarter over quarter. I mean, I mean uh, well, year over year in terms of the quarter, and then you look at the full fiscal year. It's great stuff. I mean, it's it's really good stuff. And look at net earnings, 6.5 billion for the full year here, uh, full fiscal year, 2.8 the year prior. Um, for the quarter, 3.1 over 0.7 is up 364 percent when you look at a net income basis. Really nice to see that. So, um, definitely exciting for me. 
Uh, <clears throat> we looked at the net revenue and EPS lines. Obviously, very nice to see. Uh, asset management, they generated $6.4 billion in net cash uh, in the fiscal year of 2021. Really good to see that. Love fiscal year 21 for them. It's, it's been very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, that's been very nice. I mean, what, what can I say? In the uh, fourth quarter alone, $0.9 billion in free cash flow. Uh, really like to see that. And we'll look at the balance sheet, obviously, to see what that looks like. Uh, as far as segments, personal computing, uh, personal systems, I guess, is their category here. Up 13%, which is very nice. Um, very nice. Consumer PCs decreased 3%. Uh, commercial PCs increased 25%. Obviously, from a business standpoint, could be much more important for them because you talk about repetitive uh, purchases. Typically, you'll get it from this commercial or business aspect. So, really good to see in that. Total units were down 9%. Notebooks were down 12%. But desktops were up 2%. So there's some negative and some positive. Printing net revenue was up 1% year over year. Not a massive uh, aspect of the business. Hardware units down 26%. Consumer down 28 And uh, commercial down 12%. Um, but commercial net revenue was up 19%. And I think there's a couple reasons for it. You talk about... Um, uh, other aspects they have in that printing segment and it's one of the main things that they started here was the um, never ending ink wow, I forget what the I forget what the program's called but basically you can set up a, a repetitive purchase of ink sales uh, and you really can recognize it based off of uh, when your PC is low you can get some automatically ordered to you so you don't have to worry about that aspect so again a service like that is obviously beneficial because you know hardware companies it's important to get into um, services it really is because hardware overall it's hard to hold up over time it really is so you need services as well outlook we saw that was fantastic let's look at the balance sheet um, and see what we have going here see what's cracking uh, so here we are this is what we have look it's a year over year I love year over year I really do total current assets right now sitting at 22.1 billion dollars compared to 20.6 um, slight growth there nice to see it mostly here in the inventory which a lot of companies you're seeing right now they're building up inventory for the fourth or for really the um, over the December quarter everyone's building up inventory makes sense um, especially this year because purchasing is going crazy right now people are buying stuff like crazy this year uh, retail sales up massively total assets though still up 38.6 to 34.6 so that's where you see really that growth in net income you'd like to see that from a liability standpoint um, total current liability is a 29 uh, versus a 26 billion dollar number so there was a growth there and one thing you got to understand about this company, the balance sheet's not pretty. Look, there's a stockholder deficit. Shareholders have a deficit on this company. The balance sheet's negative, uh, 1.6 billion negative. But that did compare to 2.2 of a year ago, so it's headed in the right direction. Not a beautiful balance sheet, though, all things considered for this company. Look, let's look at the stock and let's look at valuation. This is the stock after today. Um, if you equate for a 7% growth here in the market cap, um, Really, that runs right around. Um, let's see. Let's 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 run that number. One um, percent. That's three point seven. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, three seventy million uh, times seven. Okay, look, two point. Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be hovering right around uh, forty billion dollar valuation right now. Um, forty billion dollars for this company with a forward PE ratio. By the way, P ratio is going to be a lot cheaper after this quarter. It's below 10, ridiculously cheap. And again, you look at the revenue on this company for the full year, um, as we saw. Ooh, doo, doo. Um, revenue for the full year was $63 billion. Yet, this is a company still is trading at a $40 billion market cap. Look, this is a cheap stock by all, stand, all standards. Very cheap stock. I like it. I'm still buying it, especially after I'm, when they're raising the dividend by that much. Look, the company's confident, and they're they're going to be consistent about the dividend, in my opinion. That's why they raised it. They wouldn't raise it 29% if they weren't confident they could pay it. Um, I like this stock. I still love it. Going to be a great rock to the portfolio. Hope you have a good one.